Right, what's up Dragon Brood? Today I wanted to try something out because toward the beginning of the season I played an Angel deck and there were some takeaways I had but the metagame wasn't really I guess what we would call like fleshed out yet and now I feel like we're running into either a bunch of control decks and or some combination of like mono red and the Boros Convoke tokens thing or like some black green mid rangey decks. And I think the changes we can make to that deck would be pretty good on the meta on the ladder right now. So let's run down and talk about it. So the list starts with four get loss. And this is kind of a concession against the control decks, getting rid of the planeswalkers, getting rid of some of the enchantments that might be stopping some of our stuff. But randomly, this does work against things like the Selesnya enchantments decks and things. We also have Giada because, you know, angel deck. And then I kind of decided to go with Thalia, and I think in my original list I played either two or three of them, and this time I decided to go full four, and I removed stuff like Wandering Emperor in this list, so Thalia doesn't really hurt anything in the deck anymore, and this does slow down those control decks, and even some of the mid rangey decks a little bit. Of course, we're still playing a full set of Lightning Helix, we're going to be playing some Splendid Angel, because we're going all in on all the things to gain life, so I figured might as well try to get some free Angels. And, to be honest, we don't have that many quality things to play on three, so it had to be something. Archangel of Wrath obviously can be removal and some life gain, so we like that. Aurelia's Vindicator, good option to have against those control decks later in the game, but is just a sizable 4-2 flyer with flying and lifelink, which is important. We are going to be playing three Aurelia the Law above, and I think in my original list, I'm not even sure I had any of these in there. I think I was playing the Boonbringer Valkyrie. I just wasn't sure how important this was going to be, but in hindsight, if we are playing against control decks and you don't want you to get your angels eaten by Wandering Emperor, this is like the best thing, and occasionally you'll just get to draw a card, and that's pretty cool. And of course, we're going to be playing Steel Seraph. No surprise here. Now, we will be playing a full selection of Cavern of Souls because we are playing angels. I'm only going to be playing a couple of Secluded Courtyards because I don't think we really need more than that. And I don't want to get caught not being able to cast like a Lightning Helix or something. It might not matter. We might be able to play a full four by the end of the video. And we will be playing some Rustless Bivouac so we have some creature lands that also help in those control matchups. So yeah, that's going to be our deck we're rocking with today. If you want to check it out, as always, you can get it down in the description. There'll be a link. But for now, let's go see if these changes we made to the Angels deck actually hold up on the ladder. Wow, Triple Thalia. This is... uh. Not great. I'm gonna mulligan. <laughs> like, I kind of wanted to keep it and just see what would happen, but uh, that felt like a dangerous proposition. I am going to gamble here and get rid of the get lost. All right, we're going to. Uh, actually, that cacophony's camp makes Thalia not so exciting. I'm probably going to end up having to block a Felden or just let her get killed. But we do have double... Okay, that's cool. I was going to say, that works. So, they either use a removal here. I mean, not really. Like, we're probably still just having to block the Scamp. Otherwise, like, a Rage just lets Felden just come over, and that's kind of silly. Oh, well, that's unfortunate. Alright, I guess now we block this guy. Because, you know, why not? Make their spells cost a little bit more. Yep. And you can kill Thalia if you like. They will. That's not too bad. I mean, we ended up at 13 here. And we're almost where we want to be. Not quite. Man, do y'all miss animations being on arena cards? Like, look how sweet that is. If you use the old ones, you still get the cool animation because the uh, data is attached to the version, not the name of the card. But so cool. So cool. Arena. Arena folks. Arena team. If you're watching, we need more animations. Seriously. Seriously. Animations were such a cool feature, man. I mean, this our Splendid Arcane is dead, I'm assuming. Oh, I guess not. Well, that's cute. I mean, I'm blocking two. Because why not? Go to nine. Opponent finds a land, land, whatever the last thing was. Land, land, play with fire? Oh, as much as it would be fun to play Athalia here, I think we have to do this. 
Though we could have Thalia'd and I Gonjo'd something, and there's a real argument to be made for that. But I wouldn't get any more life gain out of my hand anyway with this uh, Angel of Wrath. Alright, you got it. Yep. Um, uh, why like this? I mean, if we just double block Godric, that would have to be a lightning heat strike for this to not work out for us, I think. So sure. I mean, because if it's just play with fire, we still get to keep a creature. If not, we gain three and then we just shoot something and gain some life and try to block next turn. Looks like they don't have a lightning strike, so we're good. Alright, to five, and now we're going to kill both things? No, we're just going to have it be six and not kill our angel. Oh, I guess because they're worried about another angel showing up. That's fair, actually. Alright, well, we're going to do the thing we like to do here. We're going to kick this one time for red mana. We're going to shoot that. And then we're going to attack and go to 13 and start turning the screws on the red deck here. I don't think they have any outs here with their life total going back the other way. Yeah, Godric's a nice piece, don't get me wrong, but uh, we're no longer in the blocking game for our Godric. And if you're a Godric, you gotta attack. See if I at least give up an... Oh, don't attack with those other things, though. That's terrible. Yeah, because now I just get to gain all kinds of life. If you're going to attack, you have to only attack with Godric there. Because basically we just offset their attack without giving up much value. I mean, yeah, play with fire is legit, but uh, we're still coming in. And we get a card. Yep, that's going to do it. Alright, I don't think we can afford to throw this back. Would have been much nicer to have this on the play. But uh, we'll see if we can make the, the most we can out of this. That extra bivouac might be a bit, a bit of a problem. We'll see. Oh, what? What deck plays this guy in the Eternal Wanderer? What are these shenanigans? Oh, and they left something on top. I, for real, don't know what's happening right now. Alright, well, maybe Thalia will be. I was thinking Thalia might just be a blocker. I thought this was going to be like some type of aggressive tokens deck or something. But hell, we're seeing all this. Thalia might be busted this game. Who knows? Well, nope, obviously not. Because they're blinking stuff in and out of play. That makes sense, though. Now it's starting to make a little more sense. This is actually some type of blink-style deck. Okay. Now we know some things. Let's go ahead and play this. No attack. Nope, Thalia's finally going to die. Okay, that makes sense. Fair enough. We take our three. I feel like I sort of should assume that they have some kind of sweeper in hand. I don't know why. But we'll play this. Pick it once. Targeting the inspector. The one less thing they can blink, I guess, for value. Alright. Archangel Wrath. Dead. Take three. Uh, very tempting to just go ahead and play this Aurelia's Vindicator. But I think I'm just going to attack here. And then go ahead and play this for the high side. And now it's just big monsters the rest of the way. If they do get a sweeper, maybe we get to use this Aurelius Vindicator to get some stuff back. Oh, of course. That actually does work here. You got it. Bonus X so interesting. Alright. We're attacking. 
playing the other one. I mean, if they just keep having removal, they keep having it. I'm going to try to hold on to this Aurelia for a post-sweeper situation. So we just have a 4-4 four, four Haster. Of course they have another. Their hand was all removal. Jeez. All right. Is what it is. They do get to draw a card here. We take five. Why not? I mean, are we going to do this again? All right. I think this time I'm just going to attack. Play a Vindicator. And then try to use one of these maps. Because it does also have wards. I mean, they sweep the board fine. If they don't, fine. Try again. That works. Just leave up a pile of threats. Alright, that blinks a thing to get rid of one of our maps, <laughs> I guess. Alright, cool. Uh, sure. <laughs> like, this is a little slow, but fine. No real early plays, but we do have Lightning Helixes to protect ourselves a little bit. Sadly, have to kind of play this to give ourselves an option, because we already know turn three we want to cast one of these things. Well, that doesn't do much. All right, we don't get to use much of our cards here. That's sad. All right, so question is, what do we decide to play here now? I think we just go with the Steel Seraph. And we'll see what happens. I mean, we still have access to Lightning Helix next turn, but we're probably not even going to bother with that. They are ramping up here, so I'm assuming their plan involves some type of uh, Atali shenanigans. Uh, if I play this now, then just face up, then I get the option of this plus Helix next turn and maybe get a free creature. So, sure. Let's go Life Link. Because the other option, too, is if you just gain enough life, uh, even if they have their big things, it can be hard for them to kill you. Unless, of course, they just play a big uh, dragon here to just blocks our board, and then we have to cry ourselves to sleep. Because that could very well be a thing. A Bone Horde dragon would be rough. Alright, well, that's a nuisance. But fortunately, we still have more plays. So we're not overly concerned at the moment. I think I'm going to play that and play this. And then next turn, we could just go big Steel Seraph if necessary. Or activate this, depending on what they do. But it looks like they might have more removal here. Oh, at Sushi. That is a slight bit of a problem. I do like you, Giada. All right. I mean, I guess we got to go for it, right? I don't know what else would happen here. I mean, they block. They get their options. We get an angel. Seems good. All right. Got a fight spell? No, a big Tyranix Rex. Hey, I ain't even mad at that. I appreciate that. That is right up my alley. That's the type of magic I like to play. All right. Um, how do you want to deal with this? Opponents at 10. We could pay again. Hmm. We could pay again, attack. They take nine. We end up gaining five with two eight eights. Or we have a five four. Ugh, why is why is this such a hard decision for me? I think because I want to leave up some lightning helix action for some reason, and I probably don't even need to. Alright, I'm going to do this, though. 
I mean, if the opponent has the play, they have the play. And we can try to double block a Tyranix Rex. Who knows? They might have just another Tyranix Rex here. That would be rough. Well, that's a thing that happened. All right, you got it, fam. I mean, that's a solid game plan if you got it. All right, I guess we're dead. Sure, GG's. I don't even know what we just lost to. Okay, let's do it. Do, 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 do. Is that a real person, Alexander Borges, or did the person just put their name into uh, Arena? I feel like that's probably some historical character I know nothing about that I really should, but I'm like a heathen or something. Alright, Bali is down. Gonna cut down a Thalia? I wouldn't be that mad about it, let me tell you. All right, they are not interested in such shenanigans, so we'll just go ahead and play this. And we'll give this flying. And just say, F it. You, you don't get to block and turn those into cards and treasure. Actually, I guess it's a scry and a treasure, but you know what I'm saying. All right, well, now you might as well attack with those opponent because, like, nothing else is going to happen here. Like, seriously. Uh, I'm just going to give this lifelink. Alright, no need to do much else here. If Shieldred shows up, we have a get lost, and then we just start doing angel shenanigans. Though they might also opt to just kill Giada here. Yep, go for a throw, it works. So their hand was freebooters and removal. Alright. You got it, friend, you got it. So they kept a hand that was Freebooter, and it, I'm assuming at least two removal, and then found the rest. All right. I mean, if the hand's all removal, it's all removal. Like, what am I going to do about it, right? I just got to hope they run out before we run out of bodies. But nope, they have a Liliana. Of course they're not going to run out. Enough with the mysteries. I've come for all right, get us an untapped land here, deck. Mm -mm -mm. So I can, like, kill Liliana. Wow, well, that's not a thing. All right. Sure. All right, let's see what else you got. More. I would have liked to have played this Vindicator face down, but no such luck. All right, at least we can kill that thing. That's worth it. Oh, there's the land. That's a bit late. Just running, I think I have to play this face down here. It leaves us up, get lost. If for some reason they have some removal that costs more than two, they won't be able to kill that easily. But, oh, well, that's a thing we'd like to kill. That sounds awesome. Yeah, we don't want to even have to worry about that. I probably didn't have to waste that on it, but, you know... Alright, so we can return, well, probably another Vindicator, I would imagine, huh? Alright. X is 1, right? Because it's 4 and 1? Yeah, sure. Target a creature from your graveyard. Let's go get this. Alright. Opponent is at 11. I also love that this is when it leaves the battlefield, not even when it dies. So you're guaranteed practically to get what's under it. Duress. I have a Thalia. Alright, so that means the odds of us losing our Vindicator here outside of... Okay, that's fine. Though this does turn into a bit more of a race than we want. But, you know, it is what it is. Um, Dang, I really would have liked to have played this for more mana. Damn. 
We attack for four, they go to seven. They gain three, they go to ten. If we have this and we attack, that's seven, they go to three. I think we're just going to... I'm going to mute this knucklehead because he's being an idiot. Um, I think I'm going to do this. And then I have two creatures, just in case. I can still play Thalia if I feel I need to. I can attack. Not sure I need to double block and kill this, but, like, it's an option. But now if they go to 10, we have 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. That would somewhat speed up the clock. Path of Peril kills all the little things. Sure, they get some treasure that still gives them removal options. We'll see what this last card is. Very tempting to double block here, but I'm not even going to bother. Oh, well, that speeds up the clock real, don't it? Yep, lifelink for you. And a card for us. And that'll do it. Alright. That was a nice top deck. Oh, we don't have any of our cheaper cards here. And we can't even cast the Lightning Helix. Yeah, we have to mulligan this. That is a tough hand. And then we got all the tap lands here. Ugh. Oh, wow. All right. This was not a good situation. Not a good situation. All right. Well, it doesn't matter, really, with these things. Collector's Vault. That usually means things are going to be happening in the graveyard. Um, can't cast that yet. Alright, let's just go with this. At least we're protected from, like, go for the throats. Realm Breaker, you will get plenty of mana from me, friend, let me tell you. I think I'm just going to play this, though, see if we can slow them down a little bit. And we'll see where this goes. Alright, Dolly is out of here. Give this lifelink. Alright, I think next turn we just play Resplendent Angel and see if we can get some free angels. They are discarding something... No, not something to reanimate. That's usually what you expect to see there. Well, now they have enough mana, they can still go for the throat our Vindicator. Because when you discard with the treasure Collector's Vault, it does make a treasure. They might just be waiting to use it. No. Okay, they do get a land from us. But it'll come in tapped. They're calling for Rexian. Give this lifelink. I don't know how big of a risk this is. I'm just going to keep the Thalia. Because, I mean, if the opponent just sweeps the board here, that'd just be a waste. And this is way more than seven. So, they got to kill two things. Or bounce two things. Alright. Well, that was that. I'm just going to keep this and play control deck style. Uh, playing against frontliners and stuff. Yeah, this was a bad idea. <laughs> this, it looked good on paper, but in hindsight, it's a terrible idea. Though, if they have a warden, we'd be able to kill a warden this turn. That'd be kind of nice. They did not, though. Okay, sure. We just pass. Going to flash in some 1-1s one here, I'm assuming. Here's an interesting thing. If they flash them in, I wonder if I should put a stop during their upkeep. Like, because if they, huh, they would have to tap out everything. Um, I think I'm just going to target this. 
Yeah, I'm just going to do it now. I don't even need to stop during their upkeep. I'm just going to kill it now. Just to make it harder for them to play their 4-4. Four -four. I mean, they can still do it here, but it would take their turn. And we don't take any damage. Which it looks like they might be considering. I mean, this might just be a straight-up soldier deck, too. It may not have anything to do with tokens or anything else. So, like, oh, there's a Warden. Speaking of which. But maybe it is, and they got a weird draw. I don't know what's happening right now. Oh, Giada. As much as I would love to cast you, I'm going to go here. Because the following turn, even if they kill this Angel, we could go... Yeah, that's what I thought. They might have had that. Which is one of the reasons I didn't want to run Giada out with us being light on mana. And we can actually use Giada plus a get loss next turn. So this is mono white version of the... Maybe they just didn't draw their red. I feel like I'm seeing ghosts a little bit. Like I'm playing around stuff that I just may not need to. All things considered. Alright. They didn't want to activate their case. Or solve their case, I should say. Okay. That's a thing. Alright, we did find an untapped land, so that unlocks some options here. Obviously, we would still like to draw another untapped land for Aurelia next turn, but we'll see. Alright, using a clue, that's a good sign for us. And if they tap to make a Knight Errant here, we're okay. Also, opponent, good creative name of, uh, or way of spelling your name there, Austin, A-V-5-T-N. I can appreciate that. Let's go ahead and kill this guy. Then if they attack, they can be left with two dudes and we can live with that. Okay, they opted not to attack now, so that's good. And it looks like we should get an Aurelia off here, if nothing else. Or possibly just play Resplendent Angel, leave up mana for a get lost. Which would also be more than... Okay, there's their red mana. All right. Lethal Demolition. I just finally got it. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. Okay. We are playing some magic, folks. Okay, what are we doing here? We can attack for two. We can play Aurelia's Vindicator. So even if they do have their guy and attack for a bunch, we don't care greatly. Uh, all right, let's do that. Not sure how correct this is, but it feels like it can't be totally wrong. And if they just have another case, they have another case. Like, you know, they just take their whole turn, kill the Vindicator. But if we'd have played a rally, it would have died anyway. We just got a couple more points in. I'm just kind of hoping they don't have it and we get some life gain from the Vindicator. And then if we do, okay, this is going to work out. So then now we get to play Resplendent Angel next turn, have another big body, and we'll actually get some uh, other value off of this. Now if they have another Recruiter, things get a little dicey. But still not bad. Okay, so let's say I block one thing. I would take 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. But I would gain 5, so I'd be at 5. Then next turn I attack, we go to 10, and then I have Giada, Angel, Angel to block with. Not necessarily enough to stay alive, is it? Don't think I have a choice, though. Let's block here. I think that's all we can do. All right. We might still just be dead here next turn. But I'm doing what I can. <laughs> we can kill one thing. I don't think killing one thing is enough here, but who knows. I mean, if we get Thali as a blocker, that could be something. But then we're down a blocker on Giada. If we get an untapped land, I don't know if we can afford to just play Aurelia here. We play Aurelia. Now, it's the same thing, though, right? Yeah, we, it wouldn't help. Wouldn't help. 
Uh, I just don't know. Hmm. We'll be at 10. If there's another recruiter, I think we're just dead. So I don't think I can really worry about that. I mean, because the best I could do would be... But yeah, that wouldn't even work either. All right. And this is what it is. I think I'm going to go ahead and use this. And then we'll just play this. And we'll just hope for the best. I think we're still dead, though. I <laughs> mean, another recruiter and we die. Actually, another case and we're likely dead. So, yeah, we died to a few different things here. Yeah, that's what I thought. I was going to say, another recruiter. We were dead either way. All right, GG's opponent. You got us. Okay, we get to go first. This is usable, so I say we keep it. All right, this is something. I don't know if we get to kill anything with this lightning helix, but we're about to find out. We do, and this is probably one of the few times we will even get to target this, so... That was a best-case scenario, really. Let's play this, I think. All right. This could be a situation where even if they get the cards they want with Double Strike and stuff, like, if we can gain enough life, we could kind of stay ahead of what they do, but they do hit very hard, so we have to be aware of that. We're just going to go lifelink here. Get an attack in. Play this Vindicator. Just regular price. And then hopefully if we play the Resplendent Angel, we then have some chumps we can start blocking with and make a little bit of a difference. But we could also just... That's 7, 11. Like if we just want to go ahead and play Aurelia. I don't know. We'll see. Opponent can start going off here. I mean, you can get in for like, depending on what they have in hand, could be 10 damage plus. Looks like they have it. All right. So it's going to go to four, possibly to five, six. Now nah, we're not blocking. I mean, if you just kill us next turn, you kill us next turn. I accept the consequences. We knew what we were getting into. Yep, you have two double strikers. Welcome to the club. Uh, Not quite enough to kill them. That's only 11, right? Okay. So here's what we'll do then. Lifelink it up. And then I think we just play this. And then just see if the opponent can do 25 damage. Otherwise, we have a bunch of flyers. 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So really all we have to do is keep two 4-4s four and a 3-3. Three, three. So we could chump off with the uh, Resplendent Angel if necessary. Yep. So I can get two bigger here. So it goes to six. Right now that's 14 damage. Uh, This doesn't trample yet, right? Alright, I'm just going to play it safe here. Making sure no shenanigans can happen. You know, nothing too weird. Yeah, that's fine. I mean, if they can deal with another creature here, then they'll get us. But doesn't look like they can, and that's a perfect card here. So now, even if they can deal with one, we still have more than lethal. Give this lifelink... Because I assume they would try to deal with our fours in some way otherwise. Yep, that gets to block something. Should still be enough. Good trick, though. Setting yourself up to block, but... Nope, we still have more than enough there. Wow, that's a good, good game. But yeah, drawing that land was actually pretty important there, because if we didn't have Aurelia, then we could have at least attacked with Bivouac, still had lethal, you know. But one of those things that 
the game is that close, right? If I don't draw land, then I go to attack, and I actually don't have lethal because they would have blocked a four, taking seven, they'll be at three, and now I possibly die to this because we didn't gain enough life. So yeah, it was literally that close. What are we even... Okay, sure, why not? <laughs> I'm like, what are we doing with this hand? But hey, it's playable, right? Four land, we can go two, three, four. We have a Thalia, so sure. Let's see what's up. Oh, maybe we don't two, three, four. Maybe we play a Giada here. No cut down. Oh, I, I should have played the Bivouac here. Gosh dang it. I just grabbed Lane's two card out, fast out of my hand. Giada would have been fine to play there with the Bivouac. That sucks. All right, that's my own fault, though. Okay, what are we looking to do here? We attack first. See what the opponent wants to deal with. I mean, in reality, the opponent might just want to counter something here. And then, like... Path Apparel or some such, right? But let's just do this. I mean, their counter's still live here. Alright. Well, now Path Apparel isn't as scary. Like, it's still good, but doesn't scare us nearly as much. Oh, that's, that's wonderful for us. That is freaking fantastic. This is only to cast, not to activate. Alright. So, yeah, we're going to get the same amount of damage in either way. So let's do this. Oh, wait, 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 wait. I can only do this once because I don't have black mana. Okay. Well, that's a thing that happened. Um, hmm. Wasn't planning on that. Not going to lie. All right. Well, here we go. Get in there. And then I think I'm probably just going to do this. Because I'm trying to think, like, if the opponent has Gix's command or whatever, that's not going to be enough. So, sure. I mean, I'm trying to think, like, what they could draw here. But with Thalia out, all the good sweepers are five mana. Yeah, it's not going to matter. Hmm. I'm going to mulligan this. This feels like a bit too slow. I need to have at least a three mana thing in hand there to make that worth considering. We will keep this, though. And, wow. I'm going to say no Thalia. Mostly because my logic here is, if we don't play Thalia on two, which we're very likely not, we're just going to play Jada, then we're just playing Steel Seraph into a Rally of Vindicator anyway. If Jada lives, then we play Jada into... Big Vindicator, probably. Alright, then we're definitely going to play that into Big Vindicator. And then see what we can do. I mean, actually, hmm. Vindicator only being three toughness is not as good, believe it or not. So maybe we want it to just be larger to gain more life on a later fit. Oh, hold up. Wait a minute. Let's put some groove in it. All right, we're going here. So even if they could get the warden big enough to block, we don't care that much. The upside here, too, is that if they have a case, the case can only kill the Giada. Oh, the bat's annoying, though, but fair. Oh, here comes a Knight Errant to Vios. Sure. Sounds like a plan. Also clears the way, so we have nothing to worry about, and we get Norelia's Vindicator next turn. This is pretty big. I mean, Aurelia's Vindicator. We get to life from the Aurelia's Vindicator, and we get to play Aurelia next turn. So, yeah, we're attacking. And then we play this, so we just have maximum blockers. And opponents at eight. Yep, that'll do it. 
I will say this. This was a lot of fun. Very interesting. There were times, though, I kind of wanted, like, another burn spell. Like, maybe a couple of lightning strikes or something would have been pretty cool. Maybe you could cut a get lost for one. Maybe cut an Aurelia for one. I don't know. But I will say, everything came into play. Everything was viable. It all made sense. And the deck was still good. So if you had this from the beginning of the season, there's only a couple of minor changes I would make here to play this. In hindsight, though, I don't think we need Takanuma, even though I thought it would have been a fun inclusion. Uh, how many land did I end up with in this list? 26? That's probably correct, considering how many... Like, we have to hit land 3. But I think I can get away without that and just add more included courtyards, cut one Sanctum. Then that cuts the number of tap lands we have coming into play. We still have 12 lands that make red for our 7 uh, red spells, so I don't think that's the worst thing. But yeah, this is actually not bad. If you want to play it, here we go. We got 4 Get Lost, 4 Giada, 4 Thalia, 4 Lightning Helix. You see a theme, 4 Resplendent Angel, 4 Archangel of Wrath, 4 Aurelia's Vindicator, 3 Aurelia, the Law Above, 4 Steel Seraph. If you want to cut one to bring it down to 60, you could get away with cutting a Thalia or one Get Lost or any combination of things thereof. Like I said, a Thalia, Get Lost, a uh, Aurelia, if you want to play some number of Lightning Helix as well, or Lightning Strikes as well. And I think that'll help. And, you know, speaking of tanking rank, testing different decks, like I actually played an interesting domain green base deck that was like domain aggro. So if you kind of want to see how that experiment turned out, check out that next video. Well, that's all of you for now. We'll see you next time.